Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us again today. Well, I've got another pistol video for you here today, and we're going to be talking about the P320 M18 by Sig Sauer. As many of you know, a couple of years ago, the um, P320 was uh, it won out against many other manufacturers as the new military sidearm. Um, they did so for reasons of keeping it modular. You know, you can change out the frames and the slides. There's a uh, firing mechanism, a you know, single trigger group in here that can be taken out. Want to make it easy and simple for the operator. Um, the M17, of course, is the full size. This is the M18, which is the compact. So the question we're going to be looking at today is, is the compact version of the military sidearm a reasonable choice for concealed carry? Well, we are going to cover all the features and try to answer all those questions. We're going to do that in just a minute. All right, once again, welcome back. We appreciate you being here. If this is your first time coming to the channel or if you've been watching our videos and haven't had a chance to do so until now and you like our content, please consider subscribing. You can locate that subscribe button in the lower right corner of your computer screen there. Or if you're on a mobile device, you can scroll down below the video and you can hit subscribe that way. It's a simple thing that helps out a whole lot and we really appreciate it. So, M18. Well, like I said, a lot of different pistols were uh, competing to... Um, become the new military sidearm the 320 here eventually won out um, a lot of the stuff that's gone into this design and once again is designed to keep it simple for the operator parts being interchangeable you know frames and slides and you got your single trigger uh, mechanism on the inside that can be pulled out and put into another frame um, it's interesting so we'll see how these uh, features and the way they're designed translate over into being a good pistol. But the first thing we'll do is start off like we always do. Um, when I looked at this, as far as size comparison, uh, the first thing I thought was it looked an awful lot in size uh, like a SIG 228. And uh, as, far, as far as bulk, and sure enough, uh, I grabbed my M11A1 here, which is uh, the same thing. And, uh, and it, you know, this was also a military sidearm, so I figured it was more fitting to do it this way. But if you take a look, the M11A1 and the SIG uh, P320 there, the M18, they're pretty close to the same size. And the M18, of course, um, this is a compact pistol, but you need to keep in mind this is pretty good size. Uh, most people are familiar with the SIG 228. And so this gives you a really good perspective on how big this firearm actually is. Now, once again, this is strictly a size comparison. Obviously, we're not comparing the features of a hammer-fired gun versus a striker-fired or any of that. It's just if you have carried a gun like this and you understand the weight, um, knowing that there's only four ounces lighter um, in this gun then the 228 gives you a good idea of what it's going to be like to carry it. And that's what this is all about, is what this is going to feel like in the holster, what kind of comfort you're talking about. So when you look at it, of course, across the, the top, you can see the width. Very, very similar. Looking at it from the back to the sight picture, the grip slightly longer on the M18, but these are very, very similar in size. So, if you have carried the 228 or the M11A1 or something in that category, that'll give you a really good idea of what it's going to be like to carry this one. All right, we're going to jump into the features here, but before we do, we want to take a moment to thank our friends over at Don's Weaponry for providing us this beautiful example of the SIG P320 M18 for our tabletop review today. Don's Weaponry is a huge supporter of firearm safety and education, and we can't thank them enough for their support. So we're going to do this the way we normally do in kind of a uh, top-down fashion looking at the features. And, you know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over the development and, and all these different things they did to arrive at these uh, um, choice of components. We're really looking at this as a standalone firearm for concealed carry. And there's literally hundreds of videos on the development of this thing. So um, you can do your research if you'd like. But we start off here across the top. You do have a uh, SIG light front sight there, and you have your rear sight on this plate. All of the designations of this firearm will all accept the optic. Um, the Romeo 1 Pro will go right in place of that. So they all come optics ready. Um, 
as you look at the firearm here you can see that it's been done in this sort of uh, coyote color yeah it's a pretty good matchup all the way around it's not bad I don't really get uh, too excited about uh, whether a firearm is black or whether it's coyote or whatever the color is. To me, as long as it shoots good, I don't really care too much about that. Once again, this is a striker-fired um, handgun, just to reiterate that. Uh, Sig makes a lot of great handguns that are hammer-fired, and uh, they make a lot of good striker-fired, but this is definitely a striker-fired gun. You do have a polymer frame here. Of course, inside your internal components there, the internal pieces are going to be stainless steel, those frame pieces. And um, your barrel, if you take a look, um, this is a carbon steel barrel. And as we go down here, you can see there are some pretty good serrations here on the front of the slide. It does this little slope down, so you don't have as big of an area. But, I mean, personally, I don't use the front serrations very often on a handgun. I don't even do a lot of press checks. But if I did, that would be adequate enough for me with gloves. Um, and you got your rear serrations. Um, takedown lever. Um, we'll do a quick safety check here. You can see that uh, there is nothing and the magazine there and then I'm going to let you see the barrel you can see the chambers empty there and you can look down and see the handguns empty um, taking these down is actually pretty easy because once you have it locked back all you do is just rotate this uh, lever and then um, you can unlock the slide and it comes completely off and when you do have it off then you can take out your barrel and do whatever disassembly you'd like, basic cleaning, things like that. It's it's very simple, and it's very similar to a lot of pistols that are made um, with these kind of components, so there's nothing really complicated to figure out there. So that slide release is ambidextrous, you can see. I'm gonna come around there and let you see that again. So you've got that. It does have a safety. And that safety, of course, is ambidextrous. So, of course, as a military sidearm, it had to have that. So, you've got your accessory rail here on the front. If you are the type of individual that likes to have a, you know, a lighting system or a laser or something like that on the front of your firearm, you're able to do that. Um, your magazine release is right here. It sticks up a little further than a lot of the ones that they make, but that's okay it doesn't really feel like it gets in the way whenever i'm holding the firearm in an actual shooting position even though it sticks out a little more than i would have thought it doesn't really bother me that much now the um, standard magazine for this firearm is going to be the 17 round so you've got a 17 plus one capacity in the firearm but they also give you at least a did in mind there's a couple different configurations you can order um the the one that i have of course we're allowed to have higher capacity magazines here so we actually have the uh 21 round magazines that go with it so they give you two 21s plus a 17 and that is a lot of nine millimeter ammunition so if you carry all the magazines with you i i can't see how you possibly could need to be prepared in any other way but when you put the extra magazine in it, it does change the size quite a bit. I'll talk about that a little bit more in the, uh, the carry section. But as you can see, when you put that high capacity magazine there, you've got a lot more sticking out of the bottom. So as we carry on here, um, you can see the grooves and you can see the texturing in the grip. I'm not... I'm not a real fan of the shape of this grip and I've got a big hand and normally kind of a big roundy grip is okay with me but this is a little a little too round as far as I'm concerned it just feels I don't know it, it, it doesn't feel like a handgun grip like when I grab something like this you know the 228 it feels like it's a more purposeful hand-shaped grip and uh, this feels very generic and that may have been the intention obviously it is a military pistol a lot of different people are going to use it different hands gloves no gloves so that may have been completely intentional but it's not my favorite feel of grip is what I'm getting at so the trigger 
So like I say, you've got this little, you know, firing mechanism that has the trigger. It's all one module in there. And I'm guessing that in their effort to make this modular and easy to work on, they sort of standardize this little piece that goes in here. And I'll cover this more when we talk about the range section. But the trigger is okay, but it's not what I'm going to call great. And I have a lot of pistols that have triggers that I will consider great. And that's really what I'm getting at with that. But, uh, you know, you get a lot of features on the pistol. You can carry, you know, standard capacity or large capacity. It's got a nice large, you know, trigger guard. So gloves or no gloves. Um, it's easy to take down. It's got ambidextrous controls, you know. And, of course, you know, it's completely modular. So pieces can be interchanged with the other models. So it's got a nice set of features. And, um, you know, I like the fact that it has the night sight standard, which is, uh, you know, an optional um, optic can go on there. So it's a pretty good set of features, I think, uh, for the handgun. Well, I mentioned earlier, um, you know, this handgun's been out for a while. And I was fortunate enough to get to shoot this handgun quite a bit when it first came out. And um, just now from getting a chance to do a video on it. And that's how it goes sometimes. Um, I have to take the opportunities I get to shoot these handguns. And then sometimes that's the same time I get it for review. And sometimes it's not. Sometimes I have to come back to it. But in the case of the M18, um, I was able to shoot a lot of rounds through this handgun um, last year. And I shot it so much uh, because I was really trying to decide if I was going to change my carry gun. And a lot of people were talking about the 320 as being, you know, there's a lot of hype, you know, behind the 320 when you get a new handgun, especially if it's uh, the new sidearm for the military. A lot of people think that that's, that's the way to go. And don't get me wrong, I've got a lot of SIG handguns, and I have a lot of really nice SIG handguns. And so it's not like that I'm um, against the idea. But I wanted to really see how it felt, how reliable it was versus um, a lot of other handguns that I have. So we'll start off, you know... Um, talking about the ammo itself. So at the range, um, I can't tell you how many boxes of the PMC bronze here I put through at 115 grain, uh, but it was a lot and probably equal amounts to the S and B. I just I use a lot of this ammo because I can tend to find it at a reasonable price, and it's pretty good quality ammo. It doesn't run that dirty in the firearm, um, at least my experience it hasn't been I clean my guns after every time they're shot anyway so they don't really have a chance to get that dirty um, and of course you've got your defensive ammo um, as you know from if you've watched the channel I don't shoot a handgun without running the SIG V crown through it um, it's just a round that I like I'm not saying this is the best choice I'm not saying it's a good choice for all people I'm just saying that I've had good experience with this round it's never let me down it seems to be one of the more accurate defensive rounds I have so I'm not going to be testing a 9mm handgun without this cartridge I've also run some of the uh, Hornady critical duty through it this is the 135 grain flex lock and this also did really well in the handgun so Bottom line is it's not picky on ammo, which is a good thing. Um, you don't want a concealed carry pistol that's picky on the ammo department. Now, we were talking in the features section about the sights. I like the sights okay. Like I say, you've got the Sig Light sight in the front. Um, you've got the night sight built into the rear plate. And, of course, that can be changed out. This is a pretty good sight picture. Um, I wasn't sure it was going to be because the, the dots were kind of small, but there's just enough spacing in there to where you can pick this sight picture up pretty quickly and uh, start getting good results. So I end up being pretty happy with the sights. I do like it quite a bit. Once again, I'm not a big fan of the way it feels in my hand. Um, and even once I got my, my two-handed shooting grip established and really started doing something with it, I still wish this grip was a little different it's just not uh, it's not for me that's all i'm going to say about the grip the trigger now i understand the need for these parts to be interchangeable and to be modular but i figured i was kind of excited because i thought well they're gonna to have to make the trigger you know pretty nice on this gun because 
everything else I've seen that uh, has ended up being a military sidearm has had a decent trigger on it for the most part. You know, my M11 A1 certainly does. Um, fantastic trigger on this firearm. To me, if I was trying to, and of course, once again, this is a hammer fired and this is a striker fired, so we're not making an apples to apples comparison here, but I'm just talking about general quality of the trigger. When I pull this trigger, it t feels to me the the reset is is very average, you know. As you come back, it's got just kind of an average little click there. But when I pull the trigger itself, when I come back, it doesn't it doesn't feel as consistent to me as a lot of other triggers. Um, if I shoot a Glock and um, say a Glock 19, and I pull that trigger on that Glock 20 times in a row, if I measure it with a scale, um, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be pretty tight, and it's going to feel the same for the most part. And this trigger doesn't feel quite as good to me. Um, now, as far as shooting it, it shoots great. You know, after shooting you know, hundreds of rounds through the firearm, it seems to be a consistent performer as far as, you know, being able to shoot good groups. And it's it's got a very slow learning curve. It's like, to me, if I pick up a handgun and I'm shooting a good group within a couple of magazines, I know that it's a pretty good gun. I mean, I'm a pretty good shot, but obviously it helps to have a gun that has a good trigger and it is balanced well and is good quality. And within a magazine or two, I was doing pretty well with this. Um, as I said, for me, I just don't like the feel of the trigger. That doesn't mean it's not good. It's just, to me, I don't like the way that trigger feels compared to some others. Um, and, of course, when you put the bigger magazine in it, um, you don't really need it as far as, you know, how it feels because your regular grip is big enough to accommodate all your fingers. And if it'll accommodate mine, it'll accommodate most people because I've got a pretty big hand. But um, it is interesting because it is a heavy gun, once you put, you know, 21 plus one inside the firearm. So you need to keep that in mind. It is heavy, but like I say, the gun, um, it's fun to shoot. It's very consistent as far as its accuracy. And it was extremely reliable. Um, I didn't like the particular feel of the trigger personally, but that's just me. That doesn't mean it's not good. In the beginning, we were talking about the fact that this handgun is almost as heavy as, say, my M11A1. And the only reason why I mention that is because that weight matters. The M11A1, you know, this little handgun right here, this thing is 32 ounces empty. Okay? A lot of people don't think about that. But that is a lot, that's a lot of weight. That's a lot of weight to put in a holster and put on the side. And then by the time you add, um, you know, a full magazine of ammunition to this firearm, it is really something that you're going to know you're carrying in the holster. So I want you to translate that over to this for a second, okay? You know that at the very least you're going to have 18 rounds in the handgun, assuming you have a full magazine. And if you carry the extended magazine, well then, you're going to have 22 rounds. So you can't just use any old holster. You need something that has some support. Um, Anytime I'm carrying a heavier firearm like that, I tend to lead towards something like this. Um, these little crossbreed, this is the crossbreed super tuck right here. You've got the, the hide and you've got the kydex, you've got two clips. Um, something like this, you can put on the waistline and that balances the weight out really well. And then the comfort, you know, is so good because the material going against your body is great. So I used my little crossbreed there. Um, for the purpose of this experiment, and I used a, um, a core carry belt, and this is a very, very stiff belt. So using that good quality belt and the crossbreed, um, I was able to manage this very well. But even if with that good belt and that good holster, um, I could definitely, I knew I was carrying a heavier gun than what I normally carry. There's there's no getting around it. But um, with a undershirt and then a um, um like I had like a t-shirt and then I had a fishing shirt, a Columbia shirt on the outside. Um, I was able to cover the firearm very well. So 
it fit well in my holster inside the waistband and I was able to cover it pretty good. I know that I'm aware of the weight of the firearm, especially when I get in the car, you know, and you feel the, the edge of the firearm, you know, going against the back of your seat, that type of thing. That's something I was going to mention is you've got this in the holster and, um, let's say that you're carrying a larger magazine. You got to remember this is going to change a lot of things. Cause if you have your firearm set in the holster with any type of a cant, then when you add this, it's going to stick out quite a bit further. So whether that is poking into your seat or whether it's poking into your body, um, just keep in mind that the larger capacity magazines are cool, but every time you add something to the firearm like this, that's something that you're going to have to think about from a comfort standpoint. And one of the biggest points I bring up for carrying is comfort. Accuracy, reliability, and comfort to me are the top three for a carry gun. Um, but comfort actually may as well be the first thing that you speak about because no matter how cool the firearm is or how many features it has, if it's too heavy for you or if it, uh, you know, if it doesn't feel right in the holster and you leave it at home, well, it's not doing you any good. So comfort's always got to be a primary consideration. Overall impressions of the SIG P320 M18. Well... If you are the type of individual that likes to carry a little bit larger handgun, um, there's lots of guns that fall in this category. If you like compact handguns, like if you like carrying a Glock 19, okay, no problem. You know, if you like carrying like the FN, like a 509, you know, similar size. Um, there are so many handguns. Um, H&K USP Compact. Um, HK is going to be a little bit similar, a little bit bulkier to me on the HK, but they're all in a similar class, okay, as far as being compact handguns. If you like carrying a larger gun like that, I think you'd really like the P320 because even though I'm not a huge fan of the way the grip feels, it does feel pretty pretty solid it, you know I, I don't think that there's any kind of fundamental flaw in the way this is designed it's just i just don't like the way it feels in my hand but most people i talk to feel just the opposite they really like the way it feels in their hand and they don't have a big issue with the trigger they realize that it's not going to be a you know a super custom trigger like you get on a uh, um, a high-end precision shooting gun um but i think it's consistent enough um I think it has a good feature set. And as I said, it's not picky about ammo. So what it does cover, which is the most important, is I think it's a safe choice as a carry gun. We can, you know, people can compare features, you know, safeties, whatever, materials, how things are made, how good the trigger is all day long. But if when you pick up the gun, you know it's going to perform for you, you know it's going to be there to protect you, well then I think that's one of the biggest measures of how good it is, is trust. So I think you can trust this firearm as a carry gun. And like I say, it's not a bad set of features. You got good sights, you got uh, easy takedown, you got your manual safety, you know, and ambidextrous controls, you got a accessory rail. You know, it's it's a it's a nice handgun that has a lot of features. And like I say, it holds a lot of ammo. And if you don't even use these 21 round magazines, you still got 18 in the handgun. So I think it's a really good choice for people who like to carry a larger gun. So obviously when the military designed this, um, they had a lot of interchangeability down the line. Um, who knows what we may see, you know, we may see other variants of this develop over time. But as far as what we got right now, um, the compact version, the M18 here, I think is a decent choice for anyone who's got the proper holster and they understand that they're going to be carrying a larger handgun and makes the proper you know, clothing considerations for that. Because obviously you want to make sure that you don't show the handgun. You, don't want to, you want to avoid printing if at all possible. But I think it's very doable. So not bad at all. Okay. Well, we want to thank you. That's going to do it for this time. And as always, we're back very soon with another video. So until that time, everyone, please be careful and have a great day. Thank you.